everyone, it's Joe Elliott, a lead for Tempo, and today we're going to be talking about a bunch of new features in Tempo 2.4. Okay, first we're going to start with this empty query. So we've all seen this query before. Uh, this query will just return everything. It asserts no conditions, it'll find every trace, but what we have that's new is this rate function. So uh, trace scale metrics are experimental in 2.4, and uh, we currently have only support for rate. So we can see here uh, a series of like synthetic data. It's spiking every few minutes and we see spikes up to about 1.5K spans per second. And we're seeing like a baseline around three, 400. Um, so we have the ability to show uh, rates and to do aggregations, group by, let's see what services exist in our data set. Um, and we can see we only have three services. Again, this is kind of synthetic data. Uh, but we have three services and we can see uh, the server, mythical server here is spiking to about a thousand and some of the other components are just composing less of the data. So a simple rate function off of our empty query, but we have the ability to see what services are producing these spans um, as well as the ability to do different kinds of fun grouping. So we did service name, we can do span name and we can do literally any attribute uh, in our data set. It could be right here. Uh, let's use this feature um, to do uh, two things. I'm going to search for errors, which I think is pretty standard. Uh, we have data, we have this observability data. One of the primary cases, of course, is to find uh, errors. So first I'm going to find these errors and then I'm going to do two things. I'm going to both uh, search for root cause. I'm going to dig down into the tree, the trace tree. And I'm going to search for impact. I'm going to go up the trace tree to see what uh, what uh, spans, what endpoints we are impacting uh, by imp increasing their error rates. So I, looking at these errors right here, and I see I have uh, three spans that are in error. I have this database, I have an endpoint, um, and I have this requester. Uh, we can use Tempo's structural queries to kind of determine what's causing what. We're going to look up and down this tree. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, for a status error, uh, what are the uh, what are the endpoints above this error? So let's do a span dot, and I'm going to look for in particular uh, spans with an HTTP route where they're not equal to blank. So I'm looking for any spans above an error that uh, have a route, and this is showing me that at the moment only one of my endpoints is negatively impacted. So I can see these spikes every few minutes. Uh, about eight spans per second are an error and they're above some other error. And I can see clearly what it is. It's this particular endpoint, post slash endpoint. I can see what service names. I can use this information to very quickly look above an error to figure out, you know, are, am I impacting one endpoint, one service? Am I impacting like, five, 10, a thousand? Are these critical endpoints that I need to, you know, raise an alert for? Or are these kind of endpoints that we can uh, ignore till Monday kind of situation, right? So this query is looking for errors and then it's looking for any uh, HTTP routes above that error that might be impacted. I'm able to see some spikes on this endpoint here, post slash endpoint. Maybe I'm concerned, maybe I'm not. So let's do the opposite. We just looked at the impact of this error. Let's look at root cause. So if I have an error and it's uh, at my HTTP route, let's actually change this to be what I had a second ago, right? Uh, let's do my slash endpoint. Let's flip the query. Now we're going to use an operator to look for errors somewhere beneath. So before we were taking an error um, and we were looking for the endpoints above that were impacted, and now we're taking an error at an endpoint and we're looking down the tree to find why or what is causing the errors in my endpoint. And we can see clearly that this Postgres instance is failing uh, in concert with my endpoint. So I'm looking at my endpoint, my failed endpoints, I'm looking for any errors beneath it, and I'm grouping by name and service name. So I can see that the mythical server uh, is failing somewhere beneath my endpoint anywhere in the tree. And I can see clearly that this Postgres insert is the problem. Uh, we can do other kind because this is, you know, TraceQL, because we can access all of our attributes, we can look at the database name. Uh, we can see if this is a lot of databases or one. I can see, okay, now it's just a single database that's having issues. That might be uh, comforting, perhaps, or at least it, you know, constrains the scope of my issue. Uh, then we can do by statement. So I can see what kinds of statements are failing. So right here, I can clearly see uh, I have insert statements that are failing. I can see uh, they're about failing, failing at about the same rate. So maybe not related to a single table. Maybe this is related to inserts uh, generally. At this point, I know a specific endpoint is failing. 
I know a specific database is failing along with it somewhere down the tree. I know the name of the database and I know it's all inserts. I can maybe use this information to, uh, you know, go target and very specifically look at the database, look through logs, maybe the inserts in particular are a clue that tell me what's happening. But I was able to achieve all of this only by executing TraceQL queries. I haven't even looked at a trace yet. I've never uh, looked at trace results. I've not clicked and dug through a trace and all of this was, you know, achievable, learnable by typing these metrics queries um, and, and getting results back there. Uh, so, I think root cause analysis as well as impact analysis is going to be huge with Tempo. Uh, again, experimental in 2.4, looking to GA in 2.5. I want to show just uh, some other ideas as well, uh, just to show off kind of the flexibility of the language and the, the application. But maybe something that's interesting to me is um, uh, requests between two different applications. Maybe I want to count the number of times one service calls another service. This might actually be hard with metrics. Maybe my metrics don't uh, support the cardinality required to, um, uh, to easily show all services that are connected to all other services, but I can um, do that with TraceQL quite easily. So I'm asking for how many times does the requester call the server? Oh, actually, let me switch this to a child. Um, it should be, yeah, okay, roughly the same. Uh, but we're saying how many times does we, do we cross the service boundary from this service to this service and just show me the rate? So it's a very kind of like ad hoc question. You're sitting and you're wondering how many times does my one application call this other application? My metrics don't quite support that. I'm able to instantly determine that through TraceQL metrics. And I thought about this one also. I thought this one was clever. A lot of times uh, we, a lot of times we struggle to know the impact of our of our applications downstream on all the different things they call. You call one uh, application and it calls three and then it calls 10 and your single API call turns into 5,000 or 10,000. You don't have vision on that. So something like this will show us the rate, oh, uh, yeah, the rate of database calls beneath my application uh, in, any, in any of the descendant applications. So maybe I have three or 10 or 15 dependencies and I wanna know what is my impact on relational database across the entire company. I can ask that question by saying, okay, resource service name, a okay, descendant, and show me all spans that access a database and then give me the rate of those, please. I can, of course, rate these by uh, the type of query. I can rate these by the databases that I'm accessing. I can rate these by the service that is downstream me somewhere accessing a database. Um, the uh, op options are kind of endless. Let me look at statement real fast for some fun. Um, and I can see downstream of me what are all of the all, all of the different uh, SQL statements across all applications I'm calling, and TraceQL and Tempo supports that. Okay, so uh, excited for TraceQL metrics. There's a lot of cool things on the horizon. We just have right now. Obviously, I think Quantile is next, as well as some other features, and expect this to be GA uh, in two five. Uh, we're just rapidly working on features as well as performance improvements. Um, but you can use this right now with Grafana 11 and Tempo 2.4. Uh, so as you can see here, we both did root cause analysis, which is one powerful way to use your traces to go down the tree, as well as impact analysis to go up the tree. Uh, and finally, a couple ad hoc queries for fun to show the power of being able to ask questions of your trace structure to learn about your applications. Cool. All right. Uh, you all take care and I'll see you in Tempo 2.5.